Evergrande, a real estate giant in China, is in deep shit. Welcome back everybody and in today's episode we are going to talk about the next episode in the saga of Evergrande because right now it looks pretty pretty bad. But before we dive in, please do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, click on the bell, click on all so that you don't miss anything. Leave me a comment or share with your friends if you think this is useful. But first quickly this, because during editing I noticed that although I use a light and a microphone, you sometimes hear a little bit of background noises and the sunlight made my face a little bit yellow. Uh, during editing I tried to recover this, but everything just became very ugly. So eventually I just decided to keep it the way it is. I hope you guys don't mind and enjoy the natural sunlight on my face. To understand the current situation, here is a brief summary of some facts and numbers. Evergrande was founded in 1996 and is currently counting more than 200,000 employees and more than 4 million subcontractors, making Evergrande the second largest real estate developer of the country. In the last 25 years, Evergrande only had one goal and that is to become as big as possible. And they did this through numerous ways. First of all, I think it's important to know that land in China is never owned by a private person. All the land belongs to the government, but is then usually leased to other parties for 70 years. Those parties, like Evergrande, then lease it from the government, develop real estate and then sell or rent out that real estate. Now to build all of that real estate, Evergrande needed money. So they asked investors to put in a down payment and from that down payment they could start building all the buildings. And they also used that down payment as a collateral to the banks to get even more loans to expand faster and faster. And they also used bonds and other financial products to speed up the expansion. Combine that with retail investors who put in a down payment on a home and you get a real boom of the housing market. Right now more than 1.5 million Chinese people put in a down payment and waiting for a house to be finished. Because owning a home in China is seen as a sign of prosperity. And I know this from own experience because one of my many travels I once met a Chinese guy who said that he couldn't find a wife because he doesn't own a home. But everything changed in August of 2020 when the government decided to rewrite the rules of economy as they call it. They have decided that big real estate companies like Evergrande could not hold as much debt on the balance sheet anymore as they did. The result was that Evergrande needed to start selling off some of their real estate to lower their debt. Now usually this is not a problem as long as the assets are worth more on the balance sheet, assets in this case being the real estate, than the liabilities, the loans to finance the real estate. But to speed up this process, Evergrande gave a discount on some of their real estate. This was quickly being picked up by the market and the dryers dried up. Because if they know that Evergrande started to sell the real estate with a discount, they just waited another 6 months or 12 months hoping to get a better deal. And on the other side also the investors started to dry up. People were getting afraid to put money into Evergrande. Because if Evergrande starts selling their real estate with a discount and let's say you put in 100,000, you don't know if the value of the property could still cover your loan. And this caused Evergrande to fall in a downward spiral. The prices of some of the projects are going down, therefore also the value of the real estate is going down. And therefore for them it's harder to get a loan, it's harder to finish a project, it's harder for them to pay it off. Therefore you will get some liquidations and they probably need to raise new capital out of the market to fund those projects and then you just go down and down and down. One of the results is that the stock came into a free fall right now trading at an all time low. And that also spilled over to the rest of the real estate market. Now over and over again, the government in China has stressed out that they will not step in to help, they will not bill out Evergrande. But the government did put in $188 billion to stimulate the economy. So they didn't put money in Evergrande to help them out, but they did put money in the economy for Evergrande not to fall. And at the same time, the chairman of Evergrande was forced to sell off one billion of his own assets to help out the company. Now that's a lot of money, but it is absolutely nothing compared to the debt that's on the balance sheet because the debt right now is $300 billion. That is a B of billion. So although the $1 billion will not help out the company tremendously, the government does send out a signal and that is that your behavior will not go without consequences. And the next chapter in this exciting saga is that Evergrande defaulted on their loans on the 3rd of December. Now that doesn't mean that they're bankrupt yet. It also doesn't mean that they will not pay off their loans. It just means that they missed the interest payment of those loans. Now why is this so important and why is this a big deal? 
Paying off the interest on your loans is seen in the financial world as a sign of being solvent and financially healthy. This is also called the interest coverage ratio. And this interest coverage ratio is calculated by dividing a company's earnings before interest and taxes, also called the EBIT, by its interest expense during a given period. So let's say your EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, is 100,000 and your interest costs are 1,000, then you divide the 100,000 by 1,000 is 100 and usually an interest coverage ratio of two is seen as a sign of a healthy company and of course everything above two is seen as very very good but by not even being able to pay off their period interest cost it just shows you how bad the situation is right now at Evergrande and this raises the question is Evergrande too big to fill well the answer to the outside world is no because the outstanding loans outside of China are only 260 million now this is a lot of money but for parties like let's say an investment fund, banks or pension funds, this is absolutely nothing. But Evergrande is most likely too big to fill for China itself because the economy in China is very domestic integrated and the worries are that there will be some kind of a rollover effect as they call it once Evergrande go bankrupt. So if Evergrande will go bankrupt, they need to default on all of their loans and therefore the investors who put money into Evergrande will lose their money, maybe need to sell off their assets to cover the hit that Evergrande gave them and then will spill over into other sectors and other micro economies within China and that will cause a major flood effect. Something similar that we have seen in 2008 during the economic crisis. But the big difference is, is that the economies in the West are integrated like the European countries together with the United States. Another scenario that I saw coming by but that I cannot prove is that the Chinese government already stepped in behind closed doors. They built out all the banks, took over all the debt and now they will let Evergrande go bankrupt in a very controlled and slowly way. A way that they can manage it and that the market can slowly prepare on what is coming. And the result will then be that the government will own all of the real estate that once was of Evergrande. Now, if this is really true, I don't know. Like, again, I cannot back it up with any evidence, but it is an interesting theory. Now, I'm curious what you guys think. Do you think Evergrande will go bankrupt anytime soon? Or will the government step in to save the company? Or will there maybe another scenario that we haven't thought about or haven't spoken about here on the channel? Please let me know in the comments. And when you're down there anyways, also hit that like button, subscribe, click on the bell, click on all so that you don't miss anything, or share this video with your friends if you think that's useful. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.